welcome to this tutorial video. In this particular video we'll be looking at Hooke's Law and using Hooke's Law we want to collect some data using a simulator and interpret a force extension graph and find out what we can find. So first of all I'll go to my year 10 physics notes and down the bottom here in the motion section you see I've got common form of energy with a connection linked to the FET simulator for Hooke's Law. Okay, so that's a case of just simply clicking on that. I find the FET simulation is really good for secondary high school. I'm going to click on the intro. And here we have is effectively an apparatus that we can apply a force. And the force can either stretch the spring or alternatively it can compress the spring. Either way, whether it be stretching or compressing, we have a delta X being formed here. Okay, a change in length. Now we can graphically have a look at this with an applied force, so we can see when we're applying a force, how we're pulling it to the right. Interestingly, you can also see the opposite force by the spring, which is now going to be represented by the blue or the purple. So there's a force being pulled to the right as represented by the red or orange colour. At the same time, there's an equal and opposite force, the same size arrow being pushed back to the left. The spring is trying to oppose that pull to the right by pulling back to the left. Okay, we can put in an equilibrium position, our starting position. We can measure the displacement and look at the value. So, as we pull now, we can see for a given force, the change in length, or the delta x, the extension in this case. Alternatively, we can push it to the left. There's our force, and now we have a delta x of 0.33 of a meter. This is now a delta x of compression. Notice we don't use a negative, we just say in this scenario when it's being moved from the resting position to the left, this is considered compression, whereas moving from the resting equilibrium position to the right, this one is considered extension. And we can easily see the spring being extended and compressed. Let's that take that back. What I'd like to do now is pick a particular spring constant. We'll talk about what the spring constant represents shortly, but for now, I'm going to choose 200 as my spring constant. You can increase that, you can decrease that to whatever value you wish to choose. I'm going to choose 200. Okay, so let's collect some data. I want to measure the applied force and what this does to my extension, my delta x. So, in my first measurement, I'm going to apply a force of 10 newtons and my extension, extension rather, is 0 0.05 meter. I'm going to extend that to 20 newtons. And I've got an extension of 0.1. 30 newtons, 0.15, 40 newtons, 0.20, what piece of use the arrow? 50 newtons, 0.25 of a meter extension, 60 newtons, 0.30 meters extension, 70 is 0.35, probably picking up the pattern by now, 80 is 0.4, 90 is 0.45 and finally a maximum of 100 is 0.50 of a metre. So that's all the data we needed to collect. Choose yourself a spring constant of your choice. You could choose 300, you could choose 500, you could choose 1000, whatever you want. Um, I want you to choose a particular spring constant, write that down somewhere and apply the same investigation whereby you either increase your force by 10 newtons to the right, forcing an extension delta x, or increasing it 10 newtons to the left, causing a compressive delta x. And go for 10, 20, 30, right up to 100 newtons, and record your results. Okay, we've placed our force extension data in Excel, and here we have it from a force of zero right up to 100 newtons, and a delta x extension, starting at no force, no extension, right up to 0.5 meter extension. Let's have a look at plotting this data as a graph. Now traditionally we'd say that the extension is dependent upon the force, and so we would expect the extension to be on the vertical axis and the force on the horizontal axis. For this particular relationship, which is called Hooke's Law, we're going to do the reverse. We want to put the force on the vertical and the extension on the horizontal. Reasons for which will become clear as we go. So let's insert a scatter chart, an XY scatter plot. And at the moment it's empty, I'm going to select my data, add, I want to select my x values as the extension root. 
return that back. I want to select my Y values as the force. Return that back. And here we have a beautifully straight line graph. Okay, we can now add our various features. So let's get ourselves a title on the horizontal. So this will be extension, except I might use my symbols, delta x in meters, and then axes on the vertical, we'll call this one force in newtons. And the title of this graph, I'm going to call this, oops, hooks law graph. Beautiful, we get everything we need. We have our delta x that goes up to 0.6 metre just about. We've got our force which goes up to about 100 or so newtons. Um, it's a straight line. Let's now right click and add a trend line. Now I want to set the intercept to zero because we know at zero uh, point here, we've got zero force, zero extension, and we want to display the equation. That is done, we can close that. So let's, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see it easier. Let's expand this one. So we've got here an equation that says y equals 200x. So that mathematical format of y equals mx plus c. Let's give this more realistic variables. Now the y represents the vertical axis. That actually is force. So force. And the x represents the delta x. Okay, so let's again insert symbols triangle, the delta, which stands for change in delta x. So what I've got here is force equals 200 times, I might use the mathematical time so it doesn't look like an x, so force equals 200 times delta x. And again, get rid of the force, which is called f. f equals 200 times delta x. This is really an example of Hooke's law. Okay. Hooke's law Hooke was the person that famously discovered that if I apply a force to a spring, it will extend. And if I double that force, I'll get double the extension. So you get this perfectly linear line. Okay. 20 newtons gives me extension of 0.1. 40 newtons gives me extension of 0.2. 60 newtons gives me extension of 0.3. It's a nice proportional relationship. So different springs have different gradients. And by the way, that 200, I'm hoping people can realize that that is the same value that we had originally on our spring. It was 200 Newton meters. It's called the spring constant. So when we graph our force extension, the gradient of our force gives us the spring constant. So in this case, we could say, down here, we could say the spring constant of this particular graph, and we use a symbol K for spring constant. The spring constant is 200, it's a gradient, so it's measured in the rise of newtons, run of meters. We have a spring constant of 200 newton per meter. Okay, newtons per meter. That's the spring constant. So in a general form, Hooke's law, Hooke's law states that F is equal to K times delta, the change in X. So Hooke's law is F equals K delta X, where F is the force, K is the spring constant, in this case 200, and delta X is the extension, or it could be, in another scenario, the compression. So from this graph, like I said once before in class, that when you get a graph, you've got to think, does the gradient give us any measurement? The gradient does give us the spring constant. In addition to the gradient, you can also calculate the area under the graph. The area under a force extension graph also has significance. Let's consider this, the area of this graph. It's actually the area of a triangle. Okay, so it's half base, half the base, which is delta x, delta x times the height, which was force. Okay, so let's actually calculate that. The area is equal to one half now the delta x, it goes up to 0.5. Okay, so we'll print symbol, multiply it by multiplication. 
0 0.5 and then I'm going to multiply that by that's the base times it by the height so the force if I continue on goes up to a value of 100 newtons okay so this particular graph has an area the triangle half base times height with the base is 0.5 meter and the height is 100 newtons so in this case the area is equal to now 0.5 times 100 is going to be 50 and half of that will be 25 now the important thing is what does this actually represent 25 watts what's the actual unit of measurement well it's the product of force in newtons by distance in meters we haven't studied this yet but a newton meter is actually equal to a joule the area under this graph represents the energy stored in the spring when it's stretched or alternatively it's been compressed. So this area is called the strain potential energy. Okay, now our one abbreviation we must remember is that one newton meter is equal to a joule. That's one of our new findings here. So let's summarize this whole investigation. The gradient is constant and the value of which gives us the spring constant. So this particular spring has a spring constant of 200 newtons per meter. Okay, it's rise over run, so it's newtons per meter. The area under this graph, which is the half of the base times the height, gives us the amount of energy stored in our stretched or compressed spring. And in this case, it's a half of 0.5 times 100, which is 25 joules, because a newton meter is equal to a joule. I hope this has explained Hooke's law and how we can use the force extension graph to determine both the spring constant and the strain potential energy stored in the spring when it's extended or compressed.